Hello, investing friends. We're pre uh, pre streaming here, so this is the this is not the actual stream. This is the pre stream with the countdown. I uh, back this up. I'm trying to start right at eleven o'clock now. I'm always late, of course. So we'll start a couple. I, I never the one of the problems is I never wanted to start early because people people aren't here yet. But then you start right at 11. So you, there's no option of starting early. So I'm either starting exactly at 11 or sometime a little bit late. So I'm, sometimes I'm at 11, sometimes I'm a little bit late. So now I'll start early and do the countdown. Then we'll start at 11. So that'll be good. That'll be good. I have to slow this down. I'll slow it down to half speed here. That's how much time we got. 303, 3.45, it's actually pretty good. We'll start when this goes, when we, when we get to 11. We'll start at 11. Countdown is done. Hooray. And it's 11 o'clock. All right. Hello, investing friends. Welcome into Investors Club. Got a great show for you. few things. One, of the Austin Statesman, the Austin uh, Business Journal, uh, the Statesman in the business section, they, the paper down there in Austin, Texas, where Cassava Sciences is, the Alzheimer's disease company. They did an art. They've, they've done, I guess, two or three articles uh, previously on cassava. They've gotten access to Mr. Barbier and, and then uh, written an article with uh, quotes from him. Uh, there seems to be a pretty somewhat big, big announcement. We'll take a look at the article. Uh, it's, it's not you have to. It's behind a paywall, but we got to look at it. There's somewhat some seemingly something of a big announcement in that the data that we're expecting any moment now for the full cohort of the open label. Uh, Mr. Barbie has been saying Q4. He said originally October, uh, Q4, Q4. We know that they were fully enrolled in September of 2021. A year later, they'll be fully done. So they're done. They're done. Uh, and we should get the data any time. So we're expecting it any moment. But we'll see that Mr. Barbier now, in this, according to this thing, he, he said, uh, he, he, and he might have been, he might have been slow rolling trying to, trying to, uh, put, put people to sleep and then, and then surprise the market. Cause he said could, could be. 2023. So we'll take a look at that. Uh, we'll also take a look at Truthful Hand. The great Paul Efron did a citizen's petition to the FDA to get breakthrough therapy designation for cassava sciences, somiflam, and Alzheimer's disease. Uh, we'll take a look at that. There's three comments up there. We'll show where to go to put uh, more comments up there, but there's three comments up there. We'll take a look at that. And then we'll take a look at going viral. So I talked to a terrific PR person yesterday, Jay, that I've been talking to, uh, one for, to do the cassava, a number of things, but specifically to do the cassava initiative. So we want to, to follow in the footsteps of Amulix. Amulix has an ALS drug. ALS is a fatal neurological disease, with no good treatments. They were able to get a petition with more than 50,000 signatures and thousands of comments and 38 treating doctors to say this uh, we we what they what they said was we want the fda and the company to work together to get this drug to the market so the patients can have it and we want to follow in their footsteps with cassava so uh one of the ways to decide so i talked to the pr person last night how can we get those awesome interviews to go viral and he was telling me this, this pr person really knows his stuff he's telling me we need to do clips and so we'll take a look at that it's a YouTube thing, and we'll we'll take a look. So take a look at it. We're not we're not actually able to do it yet, uh, seemingly, but we'll take a look at how to do it. The big idea is if you have, let's say, you only have hundred people following you on Twitter or whatever, uh, but if you go to the clip and make your own clip and tweet it out, and everybody does that, all the different clips, the algorithm for Twitter and all the other social medias are really going to like that. The fact that it's different clips from the same video on different accounts, and that is like a main way to make things go viral. So we want, we're going to have a call to action to do that. We're going to see how to do that. But I don't think we can do it yet for some stupid reason. My site, my account on YouTube is able to do it. For example, we can go back and do this on Mr. Barbier's interview. It seems like it'll only let you do it for uploads, as I've read. But, and so I've uploaded the edited versions of, of the latest interviews, but you can't do it. So anyway, we'll take a look at that. Anything else? 
Uh, we'll get to it as we come to it. Uh, not an investment advisor, not an investment advice, number one ranked stock analyst in the world. What we're doing here is the best research and analysis for you and me, the regular investor, because the financial media lies to us. It's controlled by the hedge funds and the special interests, and they don't have our best interest in mind, but that's okay. We've got each other, we've got Investors Club, and we're gonna do a way better job than those bozos ever could anyway. If you like that idea of, uh, of us uh, doing our own research because the financial media lies to us, please hit like. You're going to like liking like and the algorithm likes like and please subscribe as well. And with that, my investing friends, let's do it. Let's do it and take a look at this stuff. Uh, I'll take a look at the markets first. Cassava is up a few percent. Rocket Lab, ARC. Where foods, where food comes from, Sport Trader, all having a good day. Uh, SC Pharma, it was up a little, so good, pretty good day in the market. Uh, Netlist getting crunched after running yesterday. Couldn't find much on it besides rumors and innuendo. Uh, but let's get to here is the Austin from the Austin Statesman. They talk about cassava and they talk about it in the context also of these other monoclonal antibodies, like, like Hainmab, that they're, 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 these Biogen is still trying to promote. So, there's no telling how the public markets would react if a company developed a drug that showed cognitive improvement in Alzheimer's patients rather than the reduced cognitive decline touted by Biogen and Isai. Suffice to say, it would be a game changer. It's hard to even think about quantifying how successful a drug like that would be. I would think that would be the most commercially successful drug in history, as we've been saying here, uh, said Mark Engelsyard, a senior equity researcher analyst at Bloomberg who specializes in the biotech sector. That's a Bloomberg analyst, pretty terrific. That would be the ultimate home run, both for patients and developers. Cassava Sciences knows well the roller coaster ride of drug development. The company was founded by CEO Remy Barbier as Pain Therapeutics in 1998 and at one point hoped to gain approval from the FDA for its time released alternative to OxyContin. But that drug was rejected by the FDA in 2018, leading the company to pivot to Alzheimer's research and rebrand as Cassava. Though last, through last year's first six months, Cassava saw its stock climb roughly 1,800%. That, that surpassed even day trader darlings AMC and GameStop as the top performing stock in the Russell 3000 from the start of 2021 through June 27th. Investors were excited by the small company's Alzheimer's drug Semifilam, a twice daily pill once invest, once, one investor described at the time as having the safety profile of a sugar pill. Remember, it's even better than that. The safety profile in the phase 2B placebo-controlled trial, the, pl the drug arms had fewer adverse events than the placebo arm. It's safer than sugar. Preliminary, of course, sugar's vilified now, so we got we to pick something else besides sugar, like a water pill. Preliminary trials showed that semifilam had the potential to reduce cognitive decline in patients with Alzheimer's disease and perhaps even improve cognition. But Cassava's reign atop the Russell 3000 was short-lived. Allegations of data manipulation surrounding foundational research for semifilin emerged last summer. And the stock took a dump. Cassava executives have denied allegations of data manipulation and pressed forward with phase three trials. Barbier in late 2021 dismissed the allegations against his company as outlandish allegations made against us by short sellers. So where does cassava fit in the race to develop an effective treatment for Alzheimer's? Austin Business Journal caught up with Barbier recently to discuss the company's latest developments. Cassava is taking a novel approach to Alzheimer's disease research. Its scientists have identified a trend in Alzheimer's patients, a protein in their brain called filament A that has been misfolded. Somifilam is designed to restore the proper shape and function of the protein, hopefully providing a benefit to Alzheimer's patients in the process. Company has two double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled phase threes with 1,750 people. Cassava also has a 200-person open-label study that's expected to wrap up by the end of the year. Company recently announced data for 100 patients enrolled in the open-label after one year of taking semifilam. So expected to wrap up by the end of the year. We, we have good reason to expect that it wrapped up last month. So I don't know why they're talking this way. Uh, I don't know. 
I don't know if he's just sandbagging, slow rolling. The preliminary data found the drug appears safe and well tolerated. 63% uh, of open label participants improved on their Cog ADAS COG score. While there was a core group of responders, Barbier noted that a smaller group of patients do not respond to semiflam and continue to decline over time. Remember, we noted that he thinks, he said, he thinks they don't have Alzheimer's disease, and we think so too. As a result, the full 100 patient cohorts saw an average 1.5 points of improvement, though 21 of the patients saw a decline. One year results for the full 200 patient open label study could be revealed in the first quarter of 2023. So this is, this is the news. One year results for the full 200 patient open label study could be revealed in the first quarter of 2023, Barbier said. He didn't say will be revealed, he said could be. So again, he could, he could be just sandbagging, slow rolling. If we still see the bulk of patients, meaning over 50%, with stable or improved cognition over one year, that's a huge win. Now remember, this is open label. This is not placebo controlled. They're not blinded. It's possible that he knows that he's seen all of the data. It's possible he's seen all of the data and he knows that uh, over, so when he says, meaning, if we see the bulk of the patients, meaning over 50% with stable or improved cognition over one year, that's a huge win. It's possible he's already seen the data. He's seen that over 50% is stable or improved cognition over one year. That's possible. Not definite, but possible. On October 13th, Cassava announced it was initiating an open label extension for 1,600 patients who complete the phase three. Cassava has over 197 million as of June 30th. Sufficient for clinical success, but not sufficient for long-term corporate success is how Barbier described the war chest. If they, got, they had almost $200 million as of the end of June. They'll have less than that now, but sufficient for clinical success, not sufficient for long-term corporate success. So again, they're reiterating they can finish their trials with this money. But Cassava has become one of the buzziest companies in a local life science sector that has seen employment balloon by nearly 74% over the past three years. More than 18,000 people at almost 300 companies across the region work in life sciences, according to the Austin Chamber of Commerce. Cassava has a 25-person team, though Barbier says he's always looking to add staff, but he added Cassava is pretty selective, noting that everyone really needs to make an impact. Clinical success for Semiflin would likely change the calculus and swiftly. The company purchased a 90,000 square foot headquarters building in Austin last year, though it currently fills up only about 20,000 square feet. The rest of the building will allow Casal to be ready for growth when the time comes. If the next wave of clinical results turn out like Barbier expects, Cassava could experience rapidly, really rapid quantum growth almost overnight. While headaches abound for the public company, Barbier cites the opportunity to make a huge impact on medicine as a driving force for Cassava. In terms of hassles, it's nonstop as you might imagine. It's lawyers, it's nasty activists, it's people creating confusion for their own nasty reasons. Would I be able to live with myself if I didn't give it a shot? If I didn't try this drug in patients? Honestly, I would not be able to live with myself. So, Alzheimer's disease has proven to be one of the most difficult diseases in the past. Part of the reasons Biogen's latest announcement drew so much attention. Not a cure. And they're talking about Biogen. Biogen. All right. So who knows? Maybe we'll get that data like we think any, any moment like he sort of originally said, and like we would expect, because it was and it ended last month. But maybe we'll wait until uh, next quarter. I don't know. And then here is uh, some comments from Paul's petition. This drug, Semifilam, has had the best effic e efficacy as of date. This drug, Semifilam, this is from, this is from Prem Nagrath. Prem Nagrath, great job. Great job, Prem. This drug, semiflam, has had the best efficacy as of date amongst any current or probable treatment. Of course, the studies were open label, but we have placebo data from so many other studies, trials, that not administering semiflam to a subset of participants in a trial just to, go, just to gather placebo data sounds almost inhumane. Great point. There's been, what, 50, there's at least 50 studies that, that, that have terrific placebo data. We, we know what placebo patients look like. It's almost inhumane to deny people this drug to do it again. Coming to safety, Semiflam has impeccable safety record even after administering more than 300,000 doses. With unblemished safety and paralleled unparalleled efficacy, holding back this drug from millions of patients is not only unethical, 
but also inhumane. I don't understand why Semiflim cannot be approved on an urgent basis when a very controversial and brain-bleeding-causing drug with almost no efficacy, Aduhelm, is approved, even though the whole of the advisory committee unanimously recommend it not be approved. Prem, brilliant, 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 brilliant comment. I, I, I really, I love, I thought that nailed everything. I really thought that was a brilliant comment. Thank you for doing that. And then this is anonymous. Semifilam improves cognition and biomarker data and has no safety concerns, especially those such as brain bleeds that are associated with previously approved Alzheimer's drugs. And then another anonymous FDA, there is a growing body of evidence that is showing this drug clearly is significantly improving the quality of life in a majority of open label patients. The 200 open label has completed and the cognitive mation portman is over halfway complete. We also know from sponsor updates that phase three has now enrolled over 500 people. That's great, but there are millions more suffering from Alzheimer's disease and every month we wait means further decline. If this drug is safe and also providing directional improvements in a panel of disease biomarkers, why does it not already have breakthrough therapy designation and expedited review? Please expedite this drug for all patients. Brilliant comments, everybody. Great, great job. Great comments. And then let's take a look at clips. So we got, we got great interviews, unbelievable interviews from the family members of the uh, cassava scientist Semifilam trials, the open label trial, the great, 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 great family interviews. So uh, yesterday I met with the PR person, Jay. He's saying what we need to call to action now is to ask people to go to these, the video and make a clip and put it on your social media. And if everybody's making different clips leaking back to the same video, that's, how, that's a great way to, to go viral. The algorithm loves that. So what, I'll show what to do. But the problem is, if you see here on my old interview of Remy, there's clip right here. You can, you can right here it says clip. And that's what we're going to do. But if you go to the inter the recent interviews, whether the stream or the ones I've uploaded, supposedly this only works for uploads, but we've uploaded some. Still, the clip is not there. So I got to figure that out or just, I don't know, but we'll see how to do it. But this is the clip right here. So you hit clip. Sat down and said, you know what? Let's be crisp. And then, and then you can take a 60 second clip. So if you go to the, uh, if you maybe like something Dr. E said or something Hillary said or Dr. A or Dr. M, and you can go and say, aha, this is the clip right here, starting at 21.00 and ending at 21.48. And then you can hit share clip. There was an error creating clip. You must provide a title, start time, and end time. Oh, I didn't, I didn't add a uh, title there. Anyway, we'll, we'll go over this again when, when it's working on the actual stuff. I don't know why it won't, it won't work there, but the, we, we got this is a great way to go viral. So once, once the, this kicks in for the interviews, we, we, we want to do that. And with that, my investing friends, let us go to the phones. Let's go to the phones. Michael, Joe, that article caused a lot of confusion. Don't you think the company should issue a clarification? Frankly, that's kind of material. Now, he didn't say def. He didn't say definitely. He said it could. He said it could. Uh, but yeah, I, I agree. Nobody really reads the Austin Statesman. If you do a filing, if you do an 8K and say, here's some news, then everybody gets access to that filing at the exact same time. And so that's fine. If you talk to just some people and not everybody, you're not allowed to say anything material. So maybe we should just discount what he said and just think that it's, it's sort of blustered to sort of uh, uh, make, make a better surprise when he does do the data relatively early. But I don't know. It's a good question. It's a good question, Michael. Maybe top line this year in full data 2023. There you go. That's an interesting idea. That's interesting. Fernando, good morning, Jay. Good morning, Fernando. Great to see you. Pretty P, great to see you. Good morning, Joe. What requirements are needed by Saba to be FDA approved after phase three? What else is needed? So, norm, so the golden standard is two large, placebo, large long placebo-controlled trials as they're doing in phase three. Uh, but if they follow in, in Amelix's footsteps, then their phase two data will be enough uh, to make the advisory committee meet and, uh, and, and, and vote on approval or not. So uh, I don't think, maybe, maybe AMLS, maybe the AMLX's drug got BTD first. I, frankly, I don't know. 
But either way, all their, their petition did, what all their petition was asking was for those two parties to work together. The FDA and the company were asking you guys, the, the doctors are asking you, the patients are asking you, the advocacy groups are asking you to work together to bring this drug to market. And that's what we want to do. So normally we've got to wait till the end of the phase threes, but if we follow in AMLX's footsteps, uh, we can make enough noise to make them meet early. Goose. Good morning, Joe. Thoughts on biomarker data from 200 open label causing delay in reporting? Maybe Remy wants it included? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. We, we, biomarker data was supposedly was due a long time ago, like a year ago, <laughs> like a long time ago. We were supposed to get it a while ago. I don't know about a year ago, but a long time ago. JC, good morning, JC. Great to see you. Good morning. Missed your live show about <laughs> crosses yesterday. Oh, well, yeah. JC, we needed you here for the crosses. My goodness. <laughs> good to see you, my friend. Concerning the possible data delay, as Remy is not directly quoted about this point in the article, I still guess and hope that the Q1 sentence is a typo or wrong memory by the author. It's, yeah, it's, it's confounding. It's confusing. It doesn't, it's, uh, I don't know. It's always, always, <laughs> there's always something with this company, always something. Jan, or Remy thinks strategic telling that the data could come out in Q23, Q1, and then suddenly Remy drops the bomb and publishes the surprising super data that much earlier, right in your face shorts. That's, a, that's absolutely a possibility. They, we know that they seem to want to do shock and awe now to, uh, to not say much and then surprise the market rather than what they did at AAIC last year, tell them ahead of time, we have some data coming in three months and give the shorts lots and lots of time to, to, to come up with a plan to destroy it. So yeah, that's a possibility as well. He's just sandbagging because it's going to be good. We'll see. And good and soon. Laholi, if the 200 open label was to be released in the fourth quarter of 2022, why would he change it to the first quarter of 2023? I don't know. It doesn't, it's, it's not, uh, not congruous, not congruent with what we've seen. Rainer, hello, my friend. Hi, Joe. I'm convinced Remy already knows the full data of phase two open label 200, and we can expect the data to have more than 50% of strong responder. Me too. They should have access to that data. The CMS, they don't. They're blinded and will be blinded up until the end. But the open label, they're not blinded. And in some way, they're getting updates as the data comes in. So I agree. He made the, him saying, if it's over 50%, my gosh, is that strong? He may already know it's all, it's over 50%. <laughs> so that's pretty good on his part if he does. JC, you think they could be that they could be delaying the results until after the lawsuits are dismissed only if they're bad. I, I mean, if they're good results, I mean, they, even, even if, even if they're only as good as Lacane Mab, which would be much, much worse than they've been, that's still really, you know, that's still uh, good enough to be cleared, you know? So, only if they're bad, but no, you would definitely want to include them. They look good. Rasmus, could it be that he wants the lawsuits to be over in January before releasing the results? I can't see why that would be, so just guessing here. That's interesting. If the lawsuits put the bed, then when the data comes out, it'd be more impactful. That's, that's an interesting idea as well. Daniel, JC, I'm thinking the same thing. Remy waiting until SEC formally clears. Remy then requests that lawsuits are dismissed with no evidence. And then again, the data has more impact because it's not under a cloud. That's interesting. Good thinking. Wouldn't Q1 for cassava be in April, May? They don't have a funny, like some companies have funny fiscal quarters. I don't think cassava, cassava doesn't have funny fiscal quarters. Their Q1 is January, February, March. So some, com some companies do have funny fiscal quarters, and, and, uh, but not, not cassava. Uh, and I think, I think even the government has funny fiscal quarters, but not cassava. Pale primate, thumbs up for Joe. <laughs> Things out for Harambe. Thank you, my friend. Ken posted the petition from the perspective of a caregiver and child of family members. Okay, so Ken, that was, one of those was was uh, you. Great work, great work. Uh, it was a plea to the FDA to do anything possible to speed the pathway to market. Way to go. Love that you're keeping on top of all the new Saba news, Joe. Well, thank you, my friend. That's what, that's what we do. Rainer, looking at your interview with Remy, I'm missing your green shirt. In most cases, you wear your green shirt. Stock price was also green. I forgot about that. That's right. When I wore green, it was good vibes. Yeah, and I, the one day I wore red accidentally. It was not good. <laughs> Wakas, hello. Wakas, great to see you and Iman. Hi, Joe. Thank you for your shows every day. It helps us uh, long to stay up to date. My pleasure, my friend. 
Our guy Remy has had the tendency of changing his statement the recent year or so, first with the fireside and now, yeah, I don't like that. Now, maybe he's doing it strategically to help, but yeah, if it's, if it's just, uh, if it's just changing the story, yeah, we need a little more info. Impetus, Remy keeps changing his words. This company stinks and is very poorly managed. No wonder why short sellers targeted. That's a little bit. Some of it has been frustrating. Wacus, with the open label delay, have a lot of people have a lot of respect. I have a lot of respect for the company and the guy. But what's up with changing his statement only on key issues and timelines? On which I was changing his statement on key issues and timelines. I agree. I agree. That was a... I, I, it doesn't... <laughs> it's... Yet another confusing thing with this company. Impetus lawsuits won't be dismissed till next year if it happens. All the insider buys uh, might say there's a better than 50% chance. Yeah, the insiders they've got, they've been, they've been buying. So great point, Ray. Impetus, it's, a, it's time to get out of Saba and get in when it comes back to its senses. Yeah, I mean, I'm not guessing the short-term moves of this stock. Keith and Suzanne, great to see you. Hey, Joe, what pastimes cause more emotional swings than watching football and investing in the stock market? <laughs> There's pretty much nothing else. Yeah, you throw in alcohol into that and uh, the emotional swings, <laughs> football and the stock market. Absolutely, gosh. When I, I don't trade much anymore. When I did, oh my God, especially in the bull market, God, was that fun. God, oh, was that fun. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't, I, that was, you know, living and dying with every move. I don't really do that anymore, but oh man, a lot, lot, lot of fun, especially when it works for you. <laughs> Is something wrong with this? Probably. La Holy, if they have the data, they should release it because of the relevance of, with the patients and their caregivers. It's true. It, it's information for, it'll help enroll the trials. It's, 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 data points for people trying to figure it all out, what, what trials to go into and what to do. Sean, interesting note in the article about not having cash to bring to market. Yeah, it's interesting that he brought that up as well. Certainly implies they should be are interviewing a partner. A capital raise would not be looked upon well in the market. No. Uh, now, if they do a great data release, now they, the CMS data, for example, if they release that and it's great, then they could get a big pop and then maybe do a raise if they needed to. Rasmus, I like that Remy says less now. Yes, it is highly frustrating, but it is better with the shock and awe. So what can he say if the plan is not to give out information to the shorts? Yeah, if, he, if, he's, if he's got to speak without actually giving info. ADT is the next play, says Baraman Brother. Thank you, my friend. The reason for the netlist drop is that the patent trial and appeal board ruled there's a reasonable likelihood Samsung will be able to establish a claim 16 of the 912 patent is invalid. So there's the, yeah, the, 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 the we're saying if there's controversy around claim 16, we'll see if it, if it uh, goes or doesn't go. But there's the Samsung lawsuit, not quite as big as the Google lawsuit with them, yeah. ADT shares available to short goes from 1.2 million to only 100K available and major fails to deliver and also remember State Farm bought 133 million shares in the open market. I didn't know State, that's interesting. ADT, so that's, uh, is ADT the uh, payroll company or is it the security company? I think it's payroll, right? So that's interesting. State, I didn't know State Farm. State Farm is a very interesting company. Mutually owned company. There's no shareholders for State Farm except for the policyholders. So it's a really good company. Mutually owned companies have a really nice dynamic in that it's just a group of people getting together to provide services for each other. A group of people got together and everybody put a little bit of money in and then when somebody gets a car accident they get the money for the accident that's what a mutual insurance that's what state farm is and then just became an enormous 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 business uh but yeah they bought a the interesting they bought 133 million shares huh that's interesting but nothing has really changed material for netlist i think they're going to win their cases yeah when it surged it probably was people getting too euphoric on thinking about if they'll win the cases when they're Getting powder here, it's probably people being too pessimistic when they're thinking about if they'll win the cases. ADT, a powerhouse security play. Okay, so it's the security one, right, right. Uh, has incredible partners like Google, DoorDash, Lyft, Uber, State Farm, Dollar Tree, and Ford. ADT's, okay. Okay, so I guess uh, State Farm does insurance. They do homeowner's insurance. I guess perhaps that with security, an insurance company would want homeowner. They have less, less claims. Interesting. 
Hope, thank you for that, ADT. Uh, Rainer, hope for release and further update on phase three enrollment numbers. Yeah, we could use an update on enrollment. We sure could. And we, we whatever, he, whatever he was saying to Austin Statesman, we need him to clarify that to everybody. So, of course, we've got the end of quarter, end of Q3 uh, releases should be coming up here soon at the beginning of November. So we'll get a little bit of clarity one way or another. All right, great to see you guys. I'll, I'll, I've been trying, I'm upset about those, not being able to make clips of the uh, Alzheimer's videos. I'll see what I can do with that and try to get them going. Uh, but that'll, that, if we can do that, that'll be really good. And then uh, I'm also working with this guy. We were working on the language last night for the petitions and the press releases. And he's got ideas of going to, the, to all the locals, a lot of local news station things. Really good. So we'll, I'll have more to say about that. I wanted to have more to say about it. And like, like today, it was supposed to be an action. Go do this. <laughs> but uh, we'll have to figure that out. All right. Great to see you guys. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. My gosh, tomorrow's Friday already. See you tomorrow. I'll see you in the Discord. Sign up for the newsletters this weekend. Got a new, great new biotech coming. Sign up for the newsletters to get that. And then before the end of the month, we'll have another one as well. I have two great biotechs on deck. Two great biotechs on deck. And you'll get the Discord when you get that as well. So you can we can chat in the Discord. So sign up for that. And I'll see you in the Discord. Have a great night. And I'll see you in the Discord. Have a great night.